Welcome to the last part in the tutorial series for the MP system. This tutorial will cover the basic steps of integrating AI to the system. For this, I've opted for a relatively simple and readily available marketplace asset called Open World AI Spawn System. This asset has been free for some time and it's regularly on sale. Its simplicity allows us to better focus on the changes we need to make. The creator, Tim Van Kahn, has his own tutorials about their system and I highly suggest you check those out as well. Link in the description. Navigate through the folders and find the AI Spawn Manager and drag it into the level, as well as the AI Spawn Location. The latter allows you to actually spawn AI into the level. It allows you to customize the behavior of AI, the location, and the number of individual pawns. For now, we want to create a zombie AI with a random amount of roaming AI pawns. You can further adjust the spawn and despawn distance. Before we test this, we need to create a nav mesh bounds volume. This simple tool automatically calculates accessible space, which the AI can roam to. Simply drag it into the level. If you don't see it, you can either press P on your keyboard or activate it under the show menu, navigation. Scale it in size until it covers your desired location. The AI spawns successfully, but they ignore the player and we can't really interact with them. Open the AI Master Blueprint. First select the mesh and change the following collision settings. Set visibility to ignore, camera to block and damage to block. Next, search for the physical material and override it with the provided PM blood material. Inside the event graph, navigate to death and dissolve. Drag off of the event point damage node and create a multiplier for the damage float. Multiply it times negative 1 and feed it into the subtract node. Now, let's test what we've got so far. We're able to damage the AI and particle spawn. Let's increase the health of the AI a little bit, so that they don't die instantly. So far, the AI doesn't recognize us, because it is scanning for a third-person blueprint character. So we need to make it aware of the MPS character. Find the comment box labeled on C-Pawn. Delete the third-person blueprint and his valid nodes. Instead, create the Get Actor of Class node and select the MPS Master blueprint. Create a new variable called Player from the return value. Create some space and in a statement coming from the newly created node. Drag off the player return value and search for get class. Set it to as equal and copy the get class node. Connect it to the pawn output pin from the on C pawn event. Compare both classes and feed the resulting boolean into the if statement. This allows us to create a reference to the player and only the player. Connect warn AI to the true statement. Find the attack player event and replace player character reference with our newly created player node. Change the attack delay to your liking. Delete the apply damage and player character reference nodes. Get our player reference and search for the apply point damage function. Connect player to damaged actor and self to damage causer. Change the damage type class to damage type, get that actor location vector and feed it into the hit from direction input pin. Finally, set a base damage value to your liking. Note though that this value needs to be negative. Upon compile we get an error, because we need an input for the hit info. We can simply bypass this by creating a make hit result from the pin, without feeding it any additional information. As you can see, the AI now detects us and is able to damage us. However when we respawn, the AI freezes, because it doesn't fall back to its previous task.
Create some space and create another if statement from the false output pin of the previous if statement. Get the player reference and search for the BC health component. From there, get the current health float value. Create a greater equation and compare it to zero. If it's greater than zero, then the statement becomes true and the AI can attack us because we are still alive. However, if it's zero or less, then we are dead and the AI should do something else. So set the Boleyn start attacking to false and cast to the child blueprint BPC AI roaming to get the fine location to walk to function. This allows the AI to continue its roaming behavior. Lastly, we need to enable radial damage so that the frags can also hurt the AI. Search for the event radial damage function. If you now connect its damage received to the float multiplier, you'll see that the point damage float gets removed because we can't have two inputs at once. To fix this, we simply select all the relevant logic as shown, right-click it and make it a function. Open the function and label the inputs correctly. Connect a copy of the function to event radial damage and supply it with the origin vector and damage received float values. Connect the output of the function with the delay node. This completes the tutorial, the AI becomes aware of us when we are in view and will start attacking us. It will resume its normal behavior once it has reduced our health to zero. We are able to damage the AI with point damage, radial damage, and melee weapons. Of course, this is just the start and you can now really customize the AI. If you've made it this far through all the tutorials, you'll be off to a great start on your own game development journey. I have come up with a little game demo using assets and methods shown in this tutorial series to give you an idea of what's doable using the MP System version 3. This will soon be available. Disappear first. You are so much. Uh, 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 u